they are going to start telling their government, reduce it, we're not going to send in this kind of money anymore, we want to send in less. Because there's an emphasis by the general population that it's free, somebody else is paying for it. The moment they're going to have to send in that, ta that check themselves, like a business, because that's why the difference is, the mentality is different between a, a, a business and a salary earner. Because the business is sending in the money all the time. They feel it every month. The salary earner, they get their paycheck, it's already been surgically modified. They don't feel the pain. Yeah, okay, they see the number, but it's not the same thing as having the money in your bank account, signing a check, and then sending it, sending it in. That hurts. That's where it hurts. Well, we got income tax. But that's but that would be but that would be the employee the employee having to send in that check also. Right now the employer is doing that for the employee. So the moment we have that kind of a change, and it's going to be a very big change. It's not a change going to happen like that. But the day starts happening, the day governments have to admit that slavery exists in tax collection, is the day that they will have an obligation to start changing the system. And that's why when you read the book. You'll see my disclaimer on the bottom of my invoices that I do not collect taxes and the person who's my client, if they believe that this tax should be paid they may send it in themselves, that's what they're afraid of. They don't want to see that <coughs> disclaimer in court. Because I've had, it said to me during the trial on the GST issue, they can't take it to court, and I had a visit in 2001, that was the last government visit I ever had, where the province came into my yard and they said, what is it we can do to get you to start collecting taxes again? White flag was up. I said, take me to court. We cannot do that. Slavery exists, the governments know about it, and they can't fight it. So that's what my book is about. And if you think it's the end of the book, there's another chapter that's going to come out very soon that's going to happen. Right in front of your eyes is when Kathleen Wynne brings in that pension plan that she wants. Oh boy. Guess who's going to have to collect it? Businesses. And oh. fund it. I'm going to have a couple of employees in existence, and I'm not going to collect the pension. What are they going to do? What's the government going to do? They've already set the criteria of not taking me to court for not collecting the previous teeth. I'm not going to collect their pension. So that's. The book is still being written on that one. <laughs> <laughs> now the sign by law, that's what I'm going to finish off with. So you're an outlaw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a hemorrhoid. I call him toxic He's waste. A hemorrhoid. I'm a hemorrhoid. Toxic. <laughs> um, everybody looked at the issue of uh, Howard and I when we went to court and how that the last minute the uh, Court of Appeal of Ontario uh, saved the municipal ass by invoking the notwithstanding clause because we had won. Howard and I had won. Howard and I were told by the courts that we were right that this was an infringement over Section 2B, rights of freedom of expression. But it was saved by the courts invoking the notwithstanding clause, Section 1. There are two notwithstanding clauses in our charter. <coughs> Section 33 which is what Quebec used to keep Bill 101. And then there's Section 1. <coughs> Section 33 is for governments. Section 1 is for the courts. But the courts use it, supposed to use it, very sparingly and only in extreme matters. Well, here they invoked it for a simple bylaw. But the progressive, those who believe that the country should be moving to a certain way, judges who can be politicians, acted in a political fashion. And they saved the bylaw. They saved the act. The action that these people are trying to take. So Howard and I, if we had won. That was 180000 that we didn't have to pay. But by invoking Section 1, Howard and I lost, and now we have to pay $180,000 in fines. Wow. We've been put in collection, and Howard and I both told them to take a long walk off a short pier until their hat floats. <laughs> <laughs> now, you'd think the matter was dead, but prior to all this, the reason why I got in with Howard is because Howard came to my trial. Now, when the, the uh, bylaw was passed in 2008, uh, they passed it in June. On July 1st, I put up my sign in French only at my shop. 
Tom Van Dusen called up, I thought I called up Tom Van Dusen to tell him so. Tom Van Dusen called up Ken Hill, told Ken Hill, you know, there's a guy challenging the sign by law. When he told him it was me, <laughs> Tom told me, he says he was furious at the end of the line, and the next day he had to visit from the bylaw. They came to see me, gave me my fine, and I was in court. And I won. I beat them. <laughs> it was a $130 fine, and the judge, when he saw the charge, he said, I'm not dealing with language here. <coughs> Perfect. Because I used the bylaw against the municipality, and I beat them with their own bylaw. On the way it was worth it. Judge agreed with me. Mm -hmm. We went to court. We, we, I won. The municipality appealed. Now, an appeal for $130 fine cost them $10,000. Of your money. Of your money. Your money. Yeah. Yeah. Your money. Yeah. And basically, the judge went looking for something. Again, well, this is the first time I saw this. I know now, next time I go to court, what to look for. I've had two very hard lessons shown to me how judges go looking for things that the lawyers don't say or miss in order to give them a victory. Even if you have the top law firm from, of the country, like after their case with Howard and I, Gowling, Brian Crane from Gowling said, the other side didn't invoke the notwithstanding clause, the courts didn't invoke, uh, didn't mention the notwithstanding clause, so we didn't argue notwithstanding clause. We were ready to argue it, but nobody invoked it, but the courts used it after everybody was gone. So in my in my case, this judge at, at the, 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 the 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 fine the bylaw, the fine with the bylaw, he went looking for an excuse to give something to the municipality. So he found me guilty for having taken the chains off that were holding the sign off of my old structure because I'd slid in a cart a, a uh, plastic uh, sign. All I did was change the message. I did not change anything about the structure of the sign. Excuse me. But the judge wanted to give something to the other side, says, I find you guilty, I'm not giving you the sign, I'm ordering you to get the permit from the municipality. So he gives me a court order. And the lawyer for the municipality said, well, we might not accept his money. <laughs> and the judge looked at him and he said, but we'll make arrangements because they want a victory. This, this lawyer wants a victory real bad. So the next day, I got my court order. Next day, I walked into the uh, bylaw office and I said, here to get my permit. And the head bylaw officer said, I'm not giving it to you. And I said, listen, I have a, a court order here. I'm not going to go to jail for you. You either give me my court, my, my permit, or I'm going back to see the judge. She said, I'll give you a letter stating that I refuse to take your money. Perfect. <laughs> That's the first. Wow. Understand something that under the bills of exchange, if you owe money to someone, you go to pay them, and they refuse payment, right. the bill's paid. That's true. So now the municipality of Russell owes me a permit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets better. <laughs> my, my sign's still up. My sign is still up. And bylaws have been coming around this uh, for the past year about my shop, because I, I have a commercial lot, and I've got about 100 cars on the lot that we either sell or repair or scrap. And they came by because people were making complaints. As Ron was saying earlier, I've had people uh, file a complaint against me for the past four years on my yard, on anything I do. And uh, the bylaw officer came around and he, he had been coming around for three times, so I said, next time you're around here, better be ready to give me the fine. So he gives me the fine and I said, I hope your witness is ready to come to court. Oh, he says, we can be proactive now. We don't need a witness. Great. One more argument. And I said, well, if you can be proactive, I said, I pointed to my sign. I said, what about my sign? He looks over, he says, you want to fine for that? I said, yeah. So he comes back, he comes back gives me the, the fine, and it says, not getting a permit. I said, you're going to lose on that one. And he says, well, I don't have access to the file. I said, that's fine. I said, leave it like that. We'll argue it in court. But I, said, I told him, I said, you already owe me a, fine, a permit because of the last issue on how it went. And I said, when we get to court, you're going to have to be told by the judge, you've got to give me a permit. The thing is, is now they've taken the bait. Once the permit is given, now the sign in French is still up. What are they going to do? Leave it? or charge me for having a sign in French only. And that's where I will get to challenge the law as I intended to do before joining Howard. It's been, it's taken, well, 2009. It's taken five years.
to finally put in the argument that I was going through when I first started challenging the law. The problem was is that, or the, 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 the fact that it stopped is when Howard came up to me and he said, you want to join me in my, in my challenge? The man's going to have money. We're going to do a constitutional challenge. What more do you want to do a constitutional challenge? And I don't have to raise any of the funds. So sure, I'm along for the right. But who would have thought that the, government, that the courts would invoke a notwithstanding clause for a stupid, simple bylaw? As if the country's future is reliant. That's what the, the notwithstanding clause is there for. It's to, it's to prevent something that would be dramatically affecting society. But they did it for a stupid bylaw, for, for signs. So on November 13th, I'm in court. It's a pre-trial. So we negotiate. If we can't come to an agreement, then there'll be a full time. And at that point, I'll let you know the full trial because I would like to pack the court for much time. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? No questions? I have one. Yep. Read your book. <laughs> I'm talking to the people. They should read your book. Oh, yes, thank yes, you. Sir. We've got some of these books. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm happy with the compliments. Many people have told me they enjoyed reading it, and it's it's a joy. First hearing. class. Thank Don't you. try reading it at night before you go to bed. You're not going to put You're it down. You're not going to get much sleep that night. Two. <laughs> <laughs> we meet first, and you after. You have a few more to get rid of. Al. Al Spear. Al Spear. I know my name's not in there, but we'll see if I can. Put in there. Do you want to have any fruit there? He just brought me back in. Guy, I'm not Eric happy. Little? Eric? Eric Little? Andrew? Eric? Andrew. I think Andrew. Say my name once. No, Andrew Andrew, 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 Andrew said I could have him. There we go. Take it. Thank you very much. Just walk up there and go to the shop. Okay, beat me to it.